right, five minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. We, we had this discussion some time ago, and, and we kind of did it with a sense of humor, but, I, 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 but we had a serious point we were trying to make. That when we are kids, we hear fairy tales about magic words. Um, you know, we think, well, there's no such thing as magic words. And then we had this discussion about how, as parents, when we tell a child, you know, you're going to be the, you're going to be a, you're so strong or you're so smart or, or the opposite, uh, you'll never amount to anything, you know, the negative things, that those are truly, in, in a way, magic psychological words because they kind of set up a child to either believe or not believe in himself or in herself. And it goes beyond the the parent and, and or the guardian. It's the entire culture. It's the entire society. I mean, if we make one group of people feel that they won't be able to achieve anything simply because they happen to be fill in the blank, whether it's uh, a minority or a certain religion or whatever it might be, mm-hmm. um, maybe we, we have still a way to go in this country. We're trying really hard, I think. I think we've made great strides. So I, I don't want anybody to think I, I don't think that. Um, but we have some interesting information right here that I was reading, and uh, Dr. Wendell Hall is going to uh, give us the details. He is on the phone. My goodness, he's got some credentials. He is the Senior Director for Advocacy and Policy Advantage at the College Board. He served as the Deputy Director at the Institute for Higher Education Policy, and it goes on and on. He's a former high school science teacher. He's going to talk to us about the scope of the College Board's all-in campaign, and the way I understand this is if you're a very, very apt student, if you're very good, you're a good student, you should have the options to... uh, take higher level classes even though you're not at that age yet and i Mm -hmm. guess some people do and some people don't and it says here and i'm going to read this that the research shows that access to challenging coursework in high school such as advanced placement uh is essential and students of color remain underrepresented not only that but also in the other uh ap students among the ap students which stands for advanced placement Let's let Dr. Hall explain what this is all about. Dr. Wendell Hall, it's an honor to have you on the show. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Larry. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Where are you? Washington, D.C., nation's capital. All right. Um, Yeah, that that was an interesting um, piece of information that we had right there, and I had no idea. Am I alone in not knowing that? Knowing about advanced placement courses? About the fact that the, the students who could qualify aren't for some reason qualifying or, or, or entering those programs simply because they don't believe in themselves, because they may be of color? Is that true? Well, exactly. So right now, what we have, Larry, is we have a participation gap, where four out of 10 students of color nationally who have shown that they can succeed in advanced placement courses are not actually going into the courses. And just to slow down a bit, advanced placement courses are college-level courses, but actually taught within the student's high school. So they get an opportunity to earn advanced placement or advanced credit once they uh, get into college. It's a wonderful program. And what is, what is the reason why some kids who should be in those programs aren't entering into them? It could be several reasons. However, we know that one large reason is encouragement and support, especially from their parents and also from adults within their school. So the participation gap is what we're focused on. We're focusing on lessening that gap. And we want to ensure, Larry, that 100% of uh, black, Latino, and Native American students who have already shown that they can do well in those courses actually get access to the courses. Yeah, we really need that. I mean, what kind of... I mean, we have so many people who come here from other countries, and then they take advantage of our education system and do well. We really need to start, um, you know, fortifying our own students, I think. So what, is there a plan in place to make this change? Very much so. Well, first off, we want to make sure that all students who have uh, the potential to succeed actually take the courses, right? Because we know the benefits of taking the courses and ultimately the exam extend well beyond high school into college and career. In particular, we want to make sure students of color who have shown this potential take advantage of it. We don't want to lose that uh, potential. We don't want to lose those students along this pipeline when they've shown that they can actually do well in these courses. So. We have a very targeted effort. We're working with superintendents. We're working with high school principals and counselors, of course, teachers. And now we want to work, make sure that parents are brought into the loop. So parents, if you're driving to work or school with your child, 
ask them about AP courses. Um, ask them about their PSAT score report, which tells them which courses they might actually qualify for in AP. Is, is so there we want to create dialogue, Larry. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Is there a cultural element among the students themselves, maybe peer, I don't know if it's pressure, but peer re- resistance, peer reluctance? They just, like, I don't want to do it because you're not doing it. Is, is there any of that? There is an element of that, Larry. So in addition to the encouragement and support that I mentioned, we also want to make sure that, you know, students of color see other students of color who have the ability to succeed also in their, those courses. Um, we want students to feel encouraged, not discouraged, from taking challenging courses. Overall, Larry, we want students, what we call it here, is to own their own future. And part of that is to take these challenging courses. It seems, though, that everyone that goes to school has the same opportunity, no matter what uh, race or religion a person is, from uh, uh, kindergarten all through high school. But then there are, you know, steps along the way where the individual student themselves, they either, no, no matter what race you are, they feel entitled to something, or they feel that they don't have to work as hard because they're good at sports and and. And, and they're going to be passed anyway, so why should they give 100%? Well, the benefits of uh, advanced placement courses and challenging courses in general, because they extend beyond high school, that's why we want to push uh, students, your kids, to actually take advantage of those opportunities. Again, this goes beyond high school if you're in sports or if you're in other activities. We know that once you get to college, if you've taken an advanced placement course, you're more likely to receive advanced standing or advanced credit, or just uh, it factors into your admissions process when you look to apply to college. So we want to encourage both parents and students to challenge themselves because colleges are going to look at that. They're going to determine, you know, part of your admission may come from how much did you challenge yourself or did you take an easy ride your last two or three years of high school. Oh wow! And, and who do we go to in the? Well, let me let me ask you this: Can we break it down with the in the different states? Do some states do better than others, or some cities do better than others? Of course, Larry. So some states may um, have a higher percentage of students taking AP exams or passing AP exams, but it's also uh, education is so local. So you have it: states do better, some districts do better, and. You know, as a membership organization, the College Board, we work with our partners. So superintendents are our partners. Um, Principal organizations are our partners. Teacher and counselor organizations, they partner with us to see how collectively we can work to lessen this gap that I mentioned, that four out of ten students of color are not taking advantage. It's a national issue. It's a national issue, but the way we tackle it... um, is oftentimes through our local members. Through individual, yeah. So take me by the hand. How does this work? Let's say there's a a kid in school, 15 years old or whatever, and is there an invitation to take a test and he either chooses to take it or to not take it, or is it a mandatory test? How does this all work? Right. It's going to vary by school, but this is the critical time, Larry, where counselors are working with students and teachers to set class schedules for next school year. So this is the critical time that we want parents to actually reach out to your counselor, Ah. reach out to each one of your teachers to say, hey, I'm thinking about an AP course. What do you think? Do you think I might do better in a STEM AP course or an arts AP course? Overall, we have over 30 AP courses. So there's something for everyone there. Um, We uh, have to take a little break, Doctor. Uh, So let's take that break and get that out of the way, and then we'll be right back. By the way, for the listeners, uh, Dr. Hall will be with us until um, 930, so you have plenty of time to call in if you'd like to call in. The number is 622-9622. We're talking about the advanced placement courses and the... Mm, the effort to encourage everybody who should be taking these courses to take them because ultimately it'll be better for them when they get to college and then in life. Mm -hmm. Plus it'll build self-esteem, I think, just to know that you qualify. All right, we'll we'll take a break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunshine today with a high of 64 to 68, then clear and chilly tonight. Those ranging from the upper 30s in a few inland spots to 45 along the coast. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and breezy with a high of 68 to 72. Then on Friday, mostly sunny and noticeably cooler with highs ranging from the mid-50s in the northernmost part of the zone to the low 60s in the south. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. 
Hi, my name is Dr. Erica Olstein with A Better You Healthcare Acupuncture in Eastern Medicine. As primary care physicians, we use acupuncture to treat back pain, arthritis, migraines, allergies, high blood pressure, thyroid disorders, hormone imbalances, stress, and more using all natural medical therapies. We treat the source of your problems, not just your symptoms. For more information, go to abetteryouhealthcare.com or call today to set up your appointment, 352-615-5566. Keep up with what's going on in the downtown area with Ocala Downtown Newspaper. Delivering thousands of newspapers to businesses in the downtown area, Ocala Downtown is there to keep you informed. They even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about it. It's simple. For more info, just call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223, and pick up your copy of the Downtown Ocala Newspaper today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper online. All right, thank you for waiting through the break. 16 minutes after 9 o'clock, Dr. Wendell D. Hall is on the phone. He's up in Washington, D.C. His credentials are huge. Uh, among them, uh, let's see, he served as the Director of Student Success and Research at the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities. And he's talking to us today about the scope of the College Board's all-in campaign and specifically about the advanced placement um, courses and the tests that lead to those courses and the fact that there's a gap between uh, the number of students uh, in general who uh, apply for this and, and qualify for this and those who are students of color, as it says here. Um, so is, is there a gap between those who, the, the students who have, who are from families with money and those who are families without money? Like if you were to stay with one, one group of kids, do, does that also separate the children? the students? Uh, we, we actually do see also a participation gap uh, amongst the various income groups. And we're looking to lessen that as well for students who are um, qualified and have AP potential. Larry, we're, st we're seriously focused on 100% of students of color gaining access. And we want to make sure that if there is any income gap, we want to make sure that those um, courses are available in those uh, particular schools. When it comes to income, we do, however, make sure that students who are income eligible, a lower income, are given fee waivers when it comes to the AP exam. But one, one I see, right, one right. Point I make is that the AP course is not, does not cost anything. We do still see that enrollment gap by income, but that's why we're reaching out to parents and saying, please make this appointment to talk to your counselor to see if your child has potential in one of the AP exam subjects. Well, so the, we want to get directly to the parent. Okay, and the good news, I guess maybe even refreshing news, even though what you're saying sounds like we need, we've, we've got a long way to go, but it sounds like it's not, I mean, there are so many things we blame the government for, but in this case, it sounds like it's more of an individual thing that's, that's the, the reason for this. It's not like the schools aren't allowing this to happen. It's, it's there, but nobody's paying attention to it or nobody's enrolling in it. Is, is that accurate? Well, I think part of it, Larry, is around awareness. So we want to make sure that everyone's doing their part. We want to make sure that parents know to look at their child's school report, to make sure they know to go to their counselor and follow up with the counselor, especially during this critical time. We want to make sure that the college board reaches out appropriately and gives support to our membership. Right now, Larry, in Florida, over one quarter, over one fourth of students overall, so this is not just students of color, but overall in Florida, one, over one-fourth of students who have the potential to actually succeed in an AP course aren't taking the course. I wonder so why. Do, see, I'm not, I don't understand why, but, but what, what grades normally are, um, do the courses fall in? Are they the 11th and 12th grade or earlier? Usually most students take AP courses in 11th and 12th grade. Um, however, they can be offered and taken as early as ninth grade. And, th and that's why we really want to push the awareness campaign, Larry. I think you were saying you were wondering why. We think a part of it is awareness to parents in different communities to reach out to their respective school to find out if their child has that, um, yeah. has that ability. That seems like, it seems like that is the, it is the thing we need to focus on. Uh, doctor, we do have a phone call if you are okay with that. Great. Uh, good morning. Thank you for calling and for waiting. You're on the air with Dr. Wendell Hall. Good morning, Dr. Hall. It's an honor and a privilege to talk with you. I uh, had uh, observed the same 
situation when I served on the site committee here. I noticed with a lot of minority kids, uh, my son was included, they are encouraged to participate in the athletic programs, but when it comes to the academic programs, unfortunately, they are not encouraged, and especially within the school setting itself. A perfect example here was with Dante Culpepper. He was a young man who ended up being really, really successful in his in his athletic career both on a college and pro level. However, when he was in college, if it were not for uh, a, a, a former educator by the name of Ben Mathis who discovered this young man was on the on the verge of not even getting a scholarship to go uh, to college because of his grades, come to find out, no one really helped him. And so Mr. Mathis got a hold of him before it was too late and made sure that his grades were brought up. Now, they were utilizing him to play football and those types of things, but no one was encouraging him in terms of his academic credentials, which he really did have. Uh, are you finding that to be uh, nationwide? I'll hang up and listen to your answer. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the call. Thank you, and, and the pleasure is all mine to take that question. Uh, I'm a former high school science teacher myself. Part of what that caller was talking about was encouragement and support for students to be very well-rounded. Um, there are students who have academic ability. There are students who have athletic ability. And as he mentioned, we want to make sure that we encourage our students from different angles. Uh, oftentimes in several communities, they call it, you got to put your hands on a child. So we want parents to put their hands on them. And if you have to walk them or take them to their counselor, do that. We want counselors and teachers to tap a student and say, you know what, you're going to take this course because I know you'll do well. We want counselors to do the same. And at the College Board, part of what we're doing is we've sent letters to parents. We've sent letters to students to say, you know what, you can do this. You have the ability to succeed. And what we want parents to understand is it's not just the high school course but that the benefits extend well beyond high school, into college, into life. And I think once folks really understand that, that will help us with the awareness campaign yeah. so that the scenario and the situation that the gentleman mentioned doesn't happen. Yeah, I, I can see what, exactly what you're saying now that you've, un you've explained it. I, I, and you it, uh, repeat, let's see, it, it's important to repeat that this is the time to do it, February and March, right? This is when you do it? perfect timing. This is the time when your child's counselor is helping to set their schedule for next year. So even if you go in the summertime, that'd be great, but now's the sweet spot when schedules are make, being made. So what we want parents to do, what we want students to do who are listening, is to specifically go to their counselor, make an appointment. And once you make the appointment and speak with the counselor, follow up and then follow up again inquire whether or not your child has the ability. It's important to note the teacher and the counselor, they know your child best. So they can help to guide your child into which course is best for them. Larry, they're not easy courses. They're going to challenge your student. But again, the benefits of taking the course, the benefits of taking the exam are unparalleled. It takes a lot of work to be a parent and uh in Marion County, both of my children have graduated from the public school system. They did really well. They were part of the academic teams at Vanguard High School and things like that, and uh, and 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 also at CFCC, which was the community college at the time. But I I would go to every parent teacher conference. I would go to every um, open house at the high school, and you know all all the other schools during their years. And it was such a shame not to see a lot of the parents there. The teachers were there waiting to talk to the parents of the students. Uh, the guidance counselors were there. They did an excellent job. But it really does fall in the lap of the parent. If, if, if that parent is going to give up two hours of their time once a year to go to the open house at school and then a few more hours during the year to talk to the guidance counselors, uh, that uh, particular student does not have a, have a, a chance. I've, I, I've seen, you know, I've, I've heard from guidance counselors that said, you know, they're the the parents come in toward the end of the senior year and they say my child uh, I've been told my child's not going to graduate because they don't have x number of credits what can I do it's your fault well no it's, it's not the school's fault it is the fault of the parents for not taking the time to be on top of the child for their education Robin great points and we do have another yes. phone call uh, thank you for calling in and for waiting you're on the air now with Dr. Wendell Hall 
Yes, how y'all doing this morning? Good. Yeah, I like your topic because it hit on a lot of um, stigmas about, you know, students and college. And when I was growing up, it used to be like the student athlete, nice athlete student. And a lot of things in society is being uh, shoved under the rug because both well, college and athletes is concerned, the first thing is we want to win. Uh, regardless how we win, it doesn't matter, you know, if kids get an education or not, because after these kids leave these colleges, a lot of them think they're going to make the pros, and those that make the pros, they don't know about financing, they don't know about saving, they don't know n nothing really about life. So if they get hurt, they back on the streets where they come from. And it's a shame because the colleges are pushing it. I mean, you got top-notch colleges that are pushing it, low-level colleges, even like some of the Ivy League schools, done, you know, like, say, uh, dumbed down to get good athletes, you know. It used to be like, hey, if you didn't yeah. have the grades, you can't come here. So I just want to, you know, express my... Opinion and now just hang up and listen. Well, thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Wall, I want you to comment on that, but I want to compliment you because it just occurred to me something. You're not selling anything. There's no book. There's not. There might be a website, but it's not something that will be self-serving in your case. It's just, I mean, you're doing this. I just, I mean, just wanted to point this out. Dr. Hall is on the air with us today with all of his credentials, all of his background, just yeah. basically giving a, an important, important message that is very timely. you got to do it right now. So, I didn't mean to take up your time for responding to the caller, Doctor, but I, I just wanted to re tell you I'm recognizing what you're doing here. It, it's a wonderful thing. Thanks, Larry. I appreciate that. And, and just to the caller's point, thank you for the call, and also to Robin's point just a bit earlier. When, when I used to teach, there was a certain motto that we used, that I used with my students, and it was expect, believe, and achieve. And this goes to the points around mm -hmm. Athletics, which both callers have brought up, it also goes to Robin's point with uh, the role of parenting. It takes a village, so parents do matter, but we also know our counselors are doing a great job. Parents are doing a great job, and we want to make sure that everyone knows how important this is and the benefits that come much later down the line, um, beyond just what happens in high school. Yeah, wonderful. I, I, Dr. Hall's message is such an important one. I just want to remind the listeners that we do record these interviews. They're, they're in the form of a video, and Dr. Hall isn't here, so he's not in the video. You see the top of my head and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but the voice, what he's saying is so important. So I, if you can share this one, help Dr. Hall get this message out. This is a really good message. I'm really happy that we uh, scheduled you to come on today, Doctor. Um, so with that said, with, with only a minute left, how do we learn? more. How do we share this in other ways? Is there a website? Yes, there is, Larry. ExploreAP.org. ExploreAP.org. We have over 30 AP courses offered nationwide. Have the parents, parents, students, go to your counselor. Specifically talk to them to inquire which courses are your kids ready for and have them sign up for AP. Choosing AP is choosing success. I know we don't have much time, but real quick question. If somebody does well in the AP courses, does it help them in in regards to getting grants? Let's say they, they're not a rich kid. They, they're going to need money for college. Does it help with those grants? Larry, it can help in getting college placement, college credit. It can also help in the factor in the admissions process so colleges can look at them more favorably had they challenged themselves. Okay. So, Several benefits can accrue. Thank you all for having me. Doctor, what a wonderful interview. Uh, absolutely non-self-serving in this case. Um, uh, Dr. Wendell Hall, we appreciate you being on. It's such an honor. Thank you, and keep up the good work. Thank you, Larry and Robin. All right, we'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The dangerous situation in Yemen, forcing the U.S., Britain, and France to shut down embassies there. In the most recent State Department press conference, spokesperson Jen Psaki telling reporters... The safety and security of U.S. personnel in Yemen is our top priority, and we are always evaluating the security situation on the ground. 
Shiite rebel Houthis seized the capital back in September. President Obama has sent Congress a draft war authorization that says Islamic State poses a grave threat. And Comedy Central's The Daily Show host John Stewart announcing he's leaving in last night's show. 17 years is the longest I have ever in my life held a job by 16 years and five months. <laughs> His exact departure date isn't given. No word on his replacement. Fox News, we report, you decide. Superstorms, road closures, flooding, airport snowed in. If you travel for work like I do, news like that can ruin your whole day. It did mine until I discovered Citrix GoToMeeting online meeting software. With GoToMeeting, you can meet from anywhere using your computer, tablet, or smartphone. No expensive travel required. And with HD video, you simply turn on your webcam and it's just like being in the same room, which means you can stay productive no matter what the news brings. Visit GoToMeeting.com and start our free 30-day trial. Do you boast about the proficiency of your trusted financial calculator? Does getting your business a refund feel like an act of heroism? If so, you might be gear-centric, someone who knows that the right office gear helps you do great things. And at Office Depot and Office Max, we have the quality tax gear you need. Right now, save $10 on TurboTax and H&R Block Deluxe and higher. Office Depot and Office Max, gear up for great. Offer ends 214. So you need a credit card, but how do you choose? Let's compare the big banks to Florida Credit Union. They have rewards, and we do too. They have customer service, hello, 24-7. They have celebrities, hey, Danny. But with Florida Credit Union, there's no annual fee, no liability for fraudulent charges, and no 22% interest rates. Choose Florida Credit Union, and you'll not only have a great credit card, but you'll have the support and personal touch that the big banks, well, can't touch. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Federally insured by the NCUA. Join us on Saturday, March 7, 2015 for the second annual Habitat Strawberries Festival at the McPherson Government Complex. The goal of this festival is not only to provide a great time for families in Ocala, but to also raise funds to build a home for our family and our community and support Habitat for Humanity's mission to strengthen communities, build hope, and provide dignified housing solutions. Remember, Saturday, March 7, 2015 for the second annual Habitat Strawberries Festival at the McPherson Government Complex, which starts at 7 a.m. with breakfast. Real estate is the largest and most personal investment that any of us will ever make. Be sure to tune in Tuesdays at 10 a.m. when Bob Kennedy, owner of Berkshire Hathaway Home Team Realty, will be answering your questions and discussing real estate. So remember, that's Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Call 622-9622 with your questions. It pays to be an informed buyer or seller. This is news you can use from Berkshire Hathaway Home Team Realty and your friends here at WOCA. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9:30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. That was the sound of a tree falling. It could be your tree. You're going to have it trimmed, but never got around to calling Pride Tree Service. 